Today, I build a frame. So this frame I'm making for my boss. She's retiring at the end of the month and I wanted to make something special for her. So this um, is some sepele wood, which I think she really appreciates. Really pretty, got some nice color and figure to it. And I am gonna go ahead and create a uh, profile here. Just trace it right on my workpiece, see how it looks. And then um, I'm gonna go over to the table saw to start ripping this thing down. And I noticed I had this log here and God, this thing's heavy. Let's see, one, two, three, ha, lift up the legs, and kind of catch it with the back, and get rid of this thing. Ha! All right, enough of that. Back over to the table saw. I'm going to rip this down to a little bit over two inches. That's about the max that I can get out of this board. And uh, it was also perfect for the profile that I was looking for. So you can see here, I got this little strip. That was all that was left. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that piece. And then over to the planer to do a quick milling. This was already pretty straight, um, but the edges on my table saw, I don't know, the blade was not quite 90 degrees or something. So I'm just going to joint this in my planer by clamping these together on edge, running them through at the same time. And that will make sure that they're jointed nice and flat. Perfect. At this point, I wanted the boards to acclimate, so I'm going to sticker them and stack them and, and leave them overnight to make sure that nothing moves on me. And if it does, I'll remill a little bit. And on to the next day, I'm going to start with my interior rabbit. That's the part that's going to hold the glass and the backing and all that. So I'm setting up my saw with the sacrificial fence to bury a little bit of the blade. And I'll go ahead and give it a tap, make sure I get it nice and lined up. I don my... Or, adorn adorn my ppe i like to use a respirator because my dust mask is currently decommissioned i don't know what happened with the filter to it um i need to buy another one but the key here is i'm going to go ahead and just cut this in multiple passes you can see here first pass um take a an eighth off and then just knock the blade over a little bit and take an eighth of an inch at a time until I get to the final depth and I'll sneak up to it to hit my line and, and then I'll be done and move on to the other rabbits. And you can see here where I'm at. So that first one in the back there looks good and I'm going to move on to this front one. Um, I'm going to do a deeper cut and then I'm going to follow it up with subsequent shallower cuts to create a nice uh, effect there. Done, done. Dun, 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 All right, so here's the panel bit again that I'm using to create that nice curve on the inside. So the trick to this is to start small. This is a really big bit. Uh, I definitely recommend using a router table on a bit like this. And then I'm just going to slowly sneak up to my final cut. You can see here, this is going to take a long time. That was about three passes to get to this point, and I got to eat up the rest of that material. So rather than making you watch me do that, I'll just show you the finished product here. So I'm going to take off this little extra uh, piece I had on the edge, and then I'll get to cleaning up the rabbits with a um, shoulder plane. And uh, this leaves nice little shavings. I really like this little shoulder plane here. And then on the edge here, or the curve, of course, I need to use this gooseneck scraper. And this just helps remove any of those ridges that uh, I don't want to have to sand out. Now over to the frame itself. So I'm taking an existing frame and I'm just going to upgrade it. This was a bit of a cheaper option and a really good option for measuring too. And you'll see that in a second. All right, back over to the miter saw and a little safety tip. So when you're making these little cuts, off cuts, make sure to let the blade completely stop before uh, raising it back up because you can have a tooth as you come back up, catch that piece as it shifts when it gets cut and that tooth will catch it and send it flying and uh, if it hits you, that's gonna hurt. All right, now I need to do a little measuring and it's really hard to measure on the inside of the frames. There's nothing for your tape measure to hook onto. So I like to use a little clamp and just clamp it in place. And you wanna measure all the way to the most farthest corner on the inside rabbit. And so that's where I'm clamping it. But luckily I have this piece of paper since this is a pre-bought frame and I'm gonna use that as a story stick rather than measuring anything at all. 
Now, I don't want to move my saw setting. I'm going to cut everything at this exact same angle so that I know that uh, if it's a little bit off from 45, it'll all balance out in the end. And um, you can see here, the trick to this is to sneak up on your final cut. So I left a little bit of meat there, and then I'm going to cut this multiple times, just taking like a half blade or a, a blade off at a, at a time until I get to my final size, which is actually going to be about a sixteenth or so oversized because I want that glass to slip in there nicely. Okay, last little tip here and then I'll get back to work. So it's kind of nice when you try to match the grain all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to cut 20 um, inches for the opposite side off of this. I'm actually going to cut um, a 16 so it can go along here. And then I will do the same thing for the other side, reverse it, and then it'll be pretty pretty well grain matched all the way around except for my my two corners. But all right, when making picture frames, always make sure to have your 45s facing the right way so that your profile will match all the way around. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna take one of those pieces that was um, 20 inches or so, I think, and I'm just gonna cut them exactly the same by referencing each other. So rather than making a mark, I'm gonna use my head, I'm gonna push the blade down so that it's just hovering above my lower piece there. And then I'm gonna take the ends, line them up, um, with my right hand, push everything up against the saw blade and then make a cut right there. And that way I know that that top piece is my reference for the entire length and those two pieces are gonna match up perfectly. Um, so you can see here, line up those ends that I didn't cut and I'll look at the, the other side that I did cut and hot dang, right on. So let's go ahead and put the glass in for a little dry fit. Always good to dry fit. Make sure everything works. And I noticed I have about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more all the way around. So I want to drop that down a little bit. Um, and so again, line up the ends and make a cut at the exact same time. That way, you know, both of those pieces are exactly the same key to a picture frame. If you're off a little bit in your 45s, that's okay. But if everything is the same length, um, you know, the parallel sides are the same length, then you're gonna have a perfect picture frame. And on to sanding. I like to use a piece of wood as my sanding block instead of my rubber one because it uh, has a nice hard crisp corner that will keep those corners nice and tight and uh, looking crispy, looking fresh um, so that I don't accidentally round anything over. And to sand this cove here, I don't have a sanding block that will match that, but I do have a glue bottle. And turns out that the glue bottle was the exact perfect radius for what I needed. So I'm just gonna use this, wrap a little sandpaper around it, and use that as a sanding block. Just <laughs> sometimes with stuff like curves and corners and, and things like this, you gotta get a little bit creative. And you know what, this worked perfectly. For some reason, I lost the footage of me gluing this up, but it's just four corners put together in a picture frame clamp. Not that big a deal. The trick here, or something that I did do, was I used some of those baking non-stiff mats there, and I put some spring clamps because they were not quite matching up perfectly the way I wanted it to, and so I used the spring clamps to force everything into alignment, and it, it turned out pretty good. I'll show you here. It was not exactly perfect, so I'll just clean that up with a chisel. Um, and I'll one chisel it down, I'll sand that flat part, and then I'll actually use it as a uh, the chisel as a scraper here to just make sure that 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 mill work there comes together perfectly. So you can see a little bit of cleanup with the chisel. We're good to go. And on to the finish. So I'm finishing this with some boiled linseed oil to help the grain pop and uh, get some of the cool effect that you get from Sapele where in different lights, it's gonna uh, take on different colors. And then I'm gonna do a top coat of paste wax just to keep everything dust free and, and easy to dust. So rub a little bit of that on, let it dry. I think I did two or three coats of this and uh, You'll see in the finished product how it gives a nice little depth to the wood. It makes it really pretty, helps it shine a little bit. So I was reviewing the footage of the video and I realized that uh, in the office, 
I put the backing in and I didn't cover that. So what I wanted to do right now is take an old picture frame that I made to house some of my daughter's art and show you what I do. So I'll flip this over and bring you in close so I can show you how I use uh, glazing points to secure the backing. These little pieces of metal here are what's called a glazing point. And um, you can see it's got a little tip to it that digs into the wood. And then these two little tabs that are sticking up there um, that are used by a screwdriver or you know you can push them in. They make a special tool for this, but you can use just a screwdriver to push them into the edge or use that as a stop, I guess, to push into the edge of the board um, here. And so easy peasy, you just line it up and turn this around so you can see. And light pressure to stick that in there and it holds everything in nice and securely. And with that, on to the glamour shots.